Okay, so I wouldn't advise learning by rote these general formula. You should be able to work them out. And a homologous series, well, that's a list of organic chemicals, and each one of them in the list differ by CH2. And they had the same functional group as well in the homologous series. So looking at the alkanes, if you can't remember the alkanes, well, I'll just look them up in the data booklet, as long as you're not doing paper one, of course. And it seems pretty clear that for every N carbons, you're going to have 2N plus 2 hydrogens. So that's the general formula for the alkanes. So what about hexane, the sixth one? Well, that has six carbons, so it's going to have to have C6, H2 times 6 plus 2, which gives you finally C6, H14. Next one is the alkenes. If you recall, they have a carbon-carbon double bond. So there is no methane, meth implies one carbon, so you're going to start with ethene, that's C2H4, propene, and then butene. Again, just looking at these three members of the homologous series, you can work out as CnH2n. Now this uh, general formula also applies to another homologous series, the cycloalkanes. Now, once or twice the IB have asked about this. So, for example, the alkene with six carbons is going to have 12 hydrogens. But this formula could be hexene, or it could be cyclohexane. So, to work out which of these two it would be, you'd have to give a bit more detail there. For example, you'd have to draw out the structural formula showing that it has indeed a double bond. Next one is the alkynes. They have a carbon-carbon triple bond. So let's look at the first three members of the alkynes. I'm going to draw out this carbon-carbon triple bond three times. So for the first one, that's ethine, and that's C2H2. For the next one, well, let me add on a cheeky carbon here. Now, it looks tempting to put hydrogens in there, but that would be wrong. Because every carbon has to have four bonds, and that carbon in the middle now has five. So looking at the alkyne with three carbons, that looks to me to be C3H4. And moving on to the next one, I'm going to put a CH3 there. And why not put a CH3 there? No other hydrogens needed. That's all the rules followed. Every hydrogen has one bond, every carbon has four. That gives me C4H6. So the general formula for the alkynes looks like being CnH2n minus 2. Onwards to the alcohols. This is a slightly different format. With the alcohols, it's ROH. Well, R doesn't seem to be on the periodic table. So, well, that's why they chose this R to go there. R means alkyl group. So that begs the question, what's an alkyl group? Well, it sounds a little bit like it's going to be an alkane. In fact, if this is methane, an alkane, that won't actually be able to stick on to this OH. The carbon already has four bonds, the hydrogen has one. So an alkyl group just has a spare bond there. So this would be, well, you can't call it methane anymore. This is the methyl group. And the one with two carbons, another alkyl group, would be the ethyl group. Actually, you don't need to learn the general formula for the alkyl groups, but it looks like CnH2n plus 1. Oh, I taught myself something. We have the aldehydes. 
So the functional group of the aldehyde is a carbon-carbon double bond did to an oxygen and a hydrogen coming off of that carbon. So let's look at the first three members of this group. So how are we going to write that out? Well, it looks a bit confusing with the CNH2N business. If you put OH, or you could put RCHO, it seems that you have equal options here. But this one is incorrect. By tradition, if you put the H before the O, then that tells you it's an aldehyde. Don't forget, that's an alkyl group. So this is a general formula for the aldehydes. Next is the ketones. So a ketone has a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then off on one side and the other side are alkyl groups. Now you can't necessarily have R and R here because they might be different alkyl groups. So we have R and then R prime, which is just a little tick, a little one. So that's the ketones. And finally, the carboxylic acids. Uh, I thought I was alone in the gym this morning and I was spraying my shoes with the uh, cleaner for the gym. And I was caught, I didn't see anyone was in there. And what I was trying to do is I was trying to remove the smell of my shoes, which is basically down to carboxylic acids. In fact, the three carbon and the four carbon carboxylic acids are responsible uh, for a lot of the stink of shoes. You've always got to have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then an OH. And there's the alkyl group. So don't think that R is going to be propyl which is three carbons. Because then you'll have fallen into the little trap here. Notice there's already a carbon present in the general formula. So I'm going to have to account for that. So if I want to do propanoic acid, the one with three carbons, I'm going to have to use R as the ethyl group. leaving out the hydrogens for clarity here. So that's propanoic acid. Alrighty, so if you wanted to write this out in a shorter version, well, you've got R, you've got C, and then you have a choice of O2H, or you could use OOH. Both of these are good and equivalent. And we're done.